Gentleman Minnesota, Mr. Paulson, for five minutes, and we'll get one more in on this side. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with some of the retroactive rules for TARP recipients and also more pending stabilization now programs from the Treasury and the Fed that are yet to come, um, and the uncertainty now about future regulatory reform, I'm just wondering how concerned are you or are you very concerned that those factors or these factors are going to potentially drastically discourage injection of private capital, uh, I mean real private capital into your institutions that really could help you shore up your balance sheets rather than the government providing that capital. I mean, how concerned are you about that? And which retroactive changes? Uh, which retroactive changes are you referring to? Well, I'm just saying, in, in terms of like the the uh, the retroactive rules that have gone forward, the pending stabilization programs coming forward, um, you know, uncertainty about new regulatory reforms. I mean, how concerned are you about those issues addressing private capital coming into your institutions right now, as opposed to sitting back and waiting for these other things to take place? Well, they've created they've no they've certainly created some uncertainty that's not there, and so that's a deterrence. On the other hand, you have to balance it against the fact that there's some things that are uh, need to be fixed. Um, and so any uncertainty is disliked by the market. On the other hand, um, we know that we have to make changes. So we're going to go ahead and have these changes. And maybe I can just follow up, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, some of you have already said you feel that you've not been given a very clear directive, uh, you know, from Congress or the government how to use the money that has been provided that's come directly from the TARP funds. You know, aside from that directive, what other recommendations, you know, do you have for the government or for future disbursements now of those funds either to your companies or the other recipients that may get them in terms of just good advice to make sure it flows more smoothly? Well, fr frankly, I don't, I think, I think the issue is more the economy and, and creating demand than any, any one other single item. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, lending money is at the core of what a commercial bank does and, and we don't make, we don't optimize our profits unless we lend money. Uh, so we need to be, have more demand and, and the critical thing there is for the economy to turn around. Okay. And maybe I can ask an, uh, one other question. Then. As we consider the regulations for the financial markets, because we're going to be doing that now to sort of get rid of the, cr the crisis that we're in, prevent another one from happening or deepening this crisis, actually, what are the largest concerns about over-regulating, going down the roads of Sarbanes-Oxley in terms of moving in that direction and stepping too far, uh, you know, where we're intending to be helpful, but actually it could be very harmful? Is there anything specific you can draw out that we should be very cautious of? I, I think I think my my main concern uh, around compensation, for instance, is um, it, it's okay to to uh, to uh, do the things that are being said, or talked about at the at the very top, but if you start to go too low in the organization, uh, you will run off key talent key talent to uh, foreign competitors. Is that a shared view, I mean, among others? Uh, yes, it's one of our greatest worries. Yes, there's many businesses that we're in that are commission-based, for example. And if we limit across the board or whatever, uh, we could lose some of the most productive people and some of the most uh, important parts of our business. If it's widely dispersed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. Well, the gentleman yields back. Let me 